know how, don't know how, but you did it. Made a don't know how, don't know how, but you did it. Made a don't know how, don't know how, but you did it. Made a My back was when my back was against the wall, and it looked as if it was over. You made a way, and I'm standing here, and I'm standing here only because you made a way. Hallelujah, Lord. Oh. back was when my back was against the wall the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Can I get everybody to stand up on their feet and just praise the Lord? Hallelujah for who he is. He made ways out of no way. How many of you can touch and agree that we're standing, you're only standing here only because he made a way. He moved mountains. He caused walls to fall. And we're standing today only because he made a way. Even when our back was against the wall, when we didn't see no way out, our God made a way. And for that, we lift up holy hands and we give him praise. We give him honor. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for making a way for us. Hallelujah. He's a good God. He's awesome in all of his ways. He deserves all the worship, all the praise that we can give to him. Hallelujah. He woke us up this morning. He started us on our way. He put food on our table, clothes on our back. He's a good God, and he's worthy of all the praise. Hallelujah. And the scripture says, if I had 10,000 tongues, I'll praise him with everyone. But since I only have this one, I'm going to lift up the name of Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He's a good God. And a good God deserves a good praise. I said a good God deserves a good praise. No matter what you're going through, God is still good. And he's working on your behalf. So don't give up. Keep the faith. Keep smiling. Hallelujah. The joy of the Lord is your strength. You've come this far by faith. Leaning on the Lord and keep trusting. Because guess what? He never fails. Our God is a non-failing God. He never fell. He never lost a case. He never lose a battle. The battle is not yours today. I want to encourage you that it do belongs to the Lord. And if I hold my peace and let the Lord fight my battle, victory shall be mine. We are victorious people today. I say we are victorious. Hallelujah, we serve a God that is so awesome. He's an incredible God. He's an awesome God. He deserves praise, amen. Can we just give God another round of applause? <laughs> amen, just for being God. You may have your seats, and we'd like to welcome each and every one of you to our service today. Welcome to New Birth, to our live stream audience. We say welcome. Right now, we're getting ready to do our announcements. And on one announcement that I want to make today is about our food drive that we've started here at New Birth. And we need some volunteers starting November, the first Saturday in November. We're going to start handing out, handing out our food and our diapers and whatever we collected, we're going to start handing it out. But we need some volunteers to come out and help be a part of this. And we're going to do it each and every Saturday in November until we've distributed everything that we have collected. So if you're going to bring any canned goods, diapers, or wipes, please bring them in so that we can put them up and on the first Saturday in November. And until however long it takes, we're going to distribute. And if you have time, you can volunteer to come out. We're going to have some tracks. And we're just going to minister to those that are in our community and reach out. So if you're available, please come. Or either write your name down and just say, Sister Polk, I'm available to come out and help. Amen. We're not coming just to look. We're coming to do, do God's work. Amen. I believe Deacon Vernon said, Pastor said, in the scripture, go out into all the highways, you know, and compel them to come. And through this, this is a ministry that we're doing. And as New Breath, we want everybody to join in that's available as we go out into our community. Amen. Amen. Today, ladies, don't forget, today is movie day. Immediately after service, we will have our refreshments. And afterwards, we will come into the sanctuary in our theater, in our mini theater here at New Birth. And we're going to watch a great movie, and we're going to interact, and we're just going to have some fun. So today, we ask you that you be prepared to do that. Amen? Also, don't forget, on Wednesday nights at 8 p.m. on Zoom, Bishop Polk is always there at 8 p.m. teaching the Word of God. So if you don't have the Zoom information, it's up on our monitors. You can write it down. You can invite a friend to come, and it's not that long. He's on there expounding on the Word, word of God. Amen. So you can go on Zoom each and every Wednesday night. And on, Wednesday, on Saturday mornings, don't forget, here at Noonday, they have Noonday prayer. You're invited to come out each and every one if you're not doing nothing at noonday prayer. And don't forget to kick, keep our sick and shut in in. Mother Jenna, she's still a little under the weather, but she's in our prayer. And Mother Wilkins, amen, she's doing good. She's in the rehab, but just continue to lift them up in prayer. And also the bereaved family, those that are in the hospital, those that are requesting prayers, let's just keep lifting them up in the name of Jesus. Just keep praying, amen. Keep praying, you know. The prayer of the righteous availeth much. And as we pray, as we come together, as we get on one accord and just intercede for those that can't be here, the Altons and the Pierces, 
you know, that can't be here. We just keep praying for them and as God continue to move that they will be back one day and they're watching and they let us know that they're enjoying the service. Amen. They're still saved. They're still sanctified. Holy Ghost filled. But right now it's just the time that they cannot come out. So you are in our thoughts and prayers if you're listening today. Amen. And don't forget Sunday morning here at 10 a.m. is always our Sunday school. Deacon Vernon is our teacher, a great teacher of the word. Amen. He's excited and he would love to see your faces out at 10 a.m. on Sunday mornings. And here at 11 a.m., you can always join us for our worship service. As our pastor, he preaches the word of God, and we come together as a family, and we just worship the King of King, amen, each and every week here at New Birth. Amen. We ask you to govern yourselves accordingly for our announcement. Now we get ready to play a part that everybody can play, and you might say, Sister Polk, I didn't get a chance to do this or do that, but you can play this part here, and that's in our tithes and giving, amen. We want to thank each and every one of you for your continued support. Your support helps the ministry to just go as we go out into all the world and teach the gospel and preach the gospel. And we want you to just continue to do that. Amen. We have different ways you can text to give. Our phone number is 772-577-2011. Also, you can give by credit card. We do have a credit card machine here that you can give in the back. And also you can go on newbirthflorida.com and it will give you ways to give. We're going to ask our finance team to come forth and we're going to ask our musicians to give us some music and we're just going to give with a cheerful heart today. Amen. God has been so good to us and we're just, this is just a little appreciation of what he has done for us. Amen. Thank you for your giving. Now we're getting ready for the word of God. And we do have our pastor, Bishop Polk. He's here today. And he's going to bring the word of God. So if you got your Bibles, go ahead and get your Bibles out. And we're going to go into the word of God with our own Bishop Polk. But before he comes, our praise team, they're going to sing a song. And the next voice you will hear will be that of none other than our pastor, Bishop Vincent Polk Sr.
belongs to you. All over this room, my hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs it belongs to you. to you. My hallelujah belongs. My hallelujah belongs, belongs to you. Amen. Right where you are. Right where you are. If your God deserve a ridiculous praise, would you just give your God a praise like you're losing your mind? I say that, I'm all right. I'm going to say it like this. Would you give your God a ridiculous praise like you're losing your mind? Come on. Hallelujah. 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 If your God, and I hear the Holy Spirit say this, uh, maybe someone came in. Um, that need a healing. You you really you trying to put your best foot forward, and you need a healing. And by His stripes, the Word of God told me to tell you, you already healed. Now, now. Somebody don't realize your neck, your neck. Uh, I can see somebody's neck or their shoulders, their neck. God is putting you back together again. Maybe everybody in here neck is good, so maybe somebody online. But I, I want to speak to someone that your neck and your shoulders, God is putting you back together again. If y'all don't mind, would y'all just give God a praise for the healing? Oh, I said give God a praise for the healing. I wish I had some help. Come on, new book. Give God a praise for the healing. Somebody shout, I'm here. The healing. It's flowing throughout this, from aisle to aisle, the chair to chair. And listen, you may never tell nobody, but God told me to tell you, you are healed in the name of Jesus. You are healed in the, oh, if you just had the faith to believe that you are healed at the very hour when I spoke the word, you are healed. Real briefly, we, was, we got a phone call about 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. Uh, a person was in distress in the hospital. Uh, they lost their sight. They cut off a couple of, uh, amputated a few parts of their bodies, and they needed somebody to talk to. So they called us about 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, and they were going through a real difficult time. And here I am complaining about who didn't take the trash out. And there's somebody in the hospital that lost their sight, lost their limbs, don't know who's coming or who's going, can't have family members, can't even get the preacher to come pray for them. If your God woke you up this morning, in your right mind, you got a couple legs, you got two hands, you got an eye, you got a nose. If you, listen, if your God don't do nothing else, if he just woke you up, you need to give him a praise. 
Oh, I wish I had some thankful people. Somebody need to grab hold of it. Hey, you just need to give your God your sure. Oh, give him a praise. I wasn't speaking in tongue, Yahshua means Jesus, just in case somebody didn't know it. But let me tell you, we need to just honor the Lord this, this, this moment. I think this is a moment before I get into the word, because most of you ain't going to listen to it anyway. I want you to stand on your feet. And the reason why you here, the reason why you here, you may not understand the 66 books. You may not understand the revelation interpretation of what God is about to say. But one thing you do know, God's been good to you. And I know we can't touch your neighbor, and I know we can't grab and hug and do all this kind of thing. But why don't you just look around and look at somebody and say, God's been good to you too. Come on, tell about three people. God been good to you too. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to hear no more complaining. Oh, I don't know who I'm preaching to. I don't want to hear no more complaining because God been good to you. God been good to you. God been good to you. I say God been good to you. God been good to you. I'm, I mean, God, God, God been good to you. God, God, God. Oh, oh, I'm talking about Jehovah Chara been good to you. He's been good. Could I just, for this moment, just for this moment, why don't you just reflect right now of a, of a place A place that God brought you from. I remember my wife was struggling. She was struggling with an uh, illness. We didn't know what it was. She would wake up in the middle of the night hollering and screaming, saying the world coming to an end. We didn't know how to fix it. We went to every doctor, every doctor. We, we went to doctor, hospital after hospital. And they found out at the time she had a thing called vertigo. I didn't even know what it was. I thought it was a virgin. I, I didn't understand what a vertigo was. But the doctor says nothing we can do for her. But we prayed. She couldn't even sleep in the, in the dark. She lay down. She said, the whole world is spinning. But God. God delivered her. She, she can sleep at night. Sometimes she be, she be fighting me, but I, I think that's just natural. Can y'all say amen? But God took away the vertigo. She don't take any, any medication. She don't take anything for that. And I, I just, well, I don't know why I'm saying this to somebody in this room. God is healing you right now. God is reconstructing you right now. Your spirit is being reconstructed right now. You've been broken. You've been torn, but God is putting you back together again. If you receive that, would you just give a God a hand wave of praise? Hallelujah. I know we don't post to lay hands on nobody. But I want I want to do this, and I know this is not normal protocol, but I just feel led to do it. That maybe there's about I know somebody may be online, but maybe there's two or three people here that say, Pastor, this week has really been a tough week for me. And honestly, honestly, you don't have to play it off, but honestly, Pastor, I, I just, I almost just gave up. 
and it's really been hard. It's really it's been difficult throughout this week. I won't, I, I'm not going to lay hands on you because I know we were in that, that season. But by faith, would you come to the altar and just stand here at the altar? And I want to pray for you that in this season that God is about to rebuild you again. Would you come real quickly? If you Am I talking to you? And you just had a real difficult time, a real difficult season. This last week has been really, really hard. And you just don't know, uh, Lord, I don't, I'm about to give up. I'm about to give up on this person. I'm about to give up on my marriage. I'm about to give up on just, I, I'm, I don't got frustrated. I can feel it in the spirit that this week was a real challenging week. And if you didn't, if you didn't have God on your side, you might have lost your salvation. If you didn't have God, some of y'all might have went to jail this week. Some of y'all might, listen, we might have saw you on Channel 12 News this week. But it was the Lord's hands. It was the Lord that he, he covered you. He hovered over you. The Spirit of God was just like the face of the deep. He came in right in the nick of time. And when the enemy came up against you, he held up a standard up against him. God, 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 I want everyone at this altar, I want you to know that God is on your side. That God is working for you. You don't have to do all the work for God that any man should boast. God said, I'm working for you. All you have to do is allow me to come in. And this is a salvation moment. This is a moment right now. I just want to rebuild my relationship with God. I want to find where I lost my axe head. A young man, he had borrowed an axe head and he lost it. And he went to the man of God. And Elijah said, listen, the only way that I can be able to help you, you got to show me where you lost it. And I want you right now in your mind, I want you to see where you lost it. When you were about to cuss, when you was about to go off, when you, when you let the devil come in and things got really terrible. I, I, Lord, Lord, show me where I lost it. He took the man of God to that place. And Elijah began to pray, the Bible said, and the axe head, the steel began to float. I believe some things that, that the devil's trying to keep inside of you, some stuff that the devil won't deepen. God said, I'm going to make it float to the top. I'm about to get, I'm going to root some stuff out of you, some demons that's been haunting you, some demons that's been really tormenting you. God said, I'm about, I'm about to touch some stuff. Do anybody believe that God still has the power to raise up an axe head? Oh, God is about to move the axe head. I'm going to stay right there. Y'all give me two seconds, but I feel it in the spirit. God want to move the axe head. The thing that will, will actually kill somebody, but it's killing you. It's killing you. Father God, now, as I speak over those at, at this altar, some of them have really had a rough week. I feel it. I can feel your pain. I can feel your, I can feel your spirit. I can feel your spirit. I can feel your spirit. Deliverance, deliverance is coming right now. Healing is coming right now. Your mind is coming back right now. The axe head is about to rise right now. Everyone at this altar and everyone around, and maybe at, even at, at your house, hold your hands up as a sign of surrender. So, Father God, we thank you that they have surrendered. They open up their hearts right now to let the spirit of the Holy Ghost have full control of their mind, their thoughts, and every, th every reaction. God, is not how we act, it's how we react. And I pray that, Lord, that they have a reaction, that they know that the Lord of their salvation, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, that be the God of the, their salvation, that will be the God that will deliver them. It don't matter what their family do. It don't matter what their kids do. It don't matter what nobody else do. The main ingredient is the fact that, Lord, I want to be on the Lord's side. I want to be saved. I want to be delivered. I want to be set free. I want to, Lord, I want to be free. I want to be free from sin. I want, Lord, I don't want to go that way no more. I don't want to travel that road no more. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to be a free man and a free woman. God, free me now. Free me now. All over this room, and maybe those that are watching online, I want you to shout, Freedom! 
Okay. All right. Some, some of y'all may say, oh, your deliverance is in your mouth. I say the, the money is in your mouth. The blessing is in your mouth. The first fish you catch, the blessing will be in your mouth. It's in your mouth. I want you to shout, freedom! Oh, your deliverance is in your mouth. Your healing is in your mouth. Shout, freedom! I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. I'm not going to let it hold me down. I'm not going to let it destroy me. Somebody shout, freedom! And who the son has set free is free indeed. If you got your deed and you got your papers and you ain't got no liens on your property, why don't you give your God a praise for freedom? Come on, free people. Come on, free. Oh, if you're free, act like you're free. If you're free, act like you're free. If you're free, act like you're free. Come on, give him God. God bless you. God bless you. You can have your seat. You can remain standing all over this room. Somebody shout freedom. Woo. Salvation just came in the room. And the scriptures say that when one person, one person, one person, everybody can be seated. Y'all can be seated. When one person come to the Lord, Right now, little do you know, because of your willing to release what the enemy tried to hold you down with, heaven is now shouting. Heaven is now rejoicing. Hey, y'all should have got happy. If heaven get happy, you should get happy. <laughs> Amen. God bless you. I am so excited about freedom and sometimes we get caught up with church being uh, emotional and church get we get into a lot of theatrics but the true freedom is to know Jesus as your personal savior now that don't mean you you won't need some training that don't mean you won't make mistakes if you fall, at least fall forward. You're six feet ahead of everybody else. I was thinking about that. If I fall forward, I'm six feet ahead of where I was. So if you fall, somebody say fall forward. And when you get up, you're already five or six steps ahead from what you've fallen. And now listen, falling... It's not, uh, it's not a bad thing. Sometimes falling, it helps you realize what's good and what's bad. If you never had a bad relationship, you won't know a good one. So it took a couple falls. Look at somebody and say, I've been falling too. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have a couple falls. But now, now, now I can see. Yeah. You ever been on a bicycle? And they, you have your uncle or somebody pushing that bicycle? And you, and you, they be saying, you got it, you got it. And, and you turn around and notice that they don't took their hand off the bicycle. And you don't realize the way you fall is the way you, uh, that's the results of what you're going to look like when you go home. So you learn how to fall. Now, y'all, watch, watch what I'm saying to you. When I was young on a bicycle, I would fall with the bicycle. But when I skinned my knees two times, I learned how to get off the bicycle. The bicycle fall, but I remain up. Why is that true? Because I learned how to fall. And in life, you're going to have some ups, you're going to have downs, you're going to have struggles. Don't let anybody convince you because you saved. You are exempt.
from trouble. No, when you get saved, you just got in trouble. Woo, I, I wish I could preach it the way I said. When you, you just gave your life to the Lord, you just got in trouble. You think you had some trouble. But now you got help how to deal with trouble. I remember this guy named Troy Howard. I hope he's not watching right now. But Troy was a bully. And uh, I wouldn't consider myself a bully, but I considered myself one that I used to like to fight a little bit. Not much, but I used to like to fight a little bit. But Troy was taller than me. And Troy was ugly. <laughs> it's bad to be a good-looking bully, but an ugly bully. I was kind of scared of Troy. And Troy, for some reason, was picking on me. And I put my head down and say, you better not hit me. You better not hit me. But I was scared. But my uncle, in the crowd, because you remember back in the days when a fight started, every, the crowd go where the fight at. But I was, had my head down like a, like a little dog with the tail on his leg, I said, you better hit me, Troy. But when I saw my uncle, it's like something got a hold of me. Oh, y'all missing what I'm trying to tell you. See, the devil had me afraid until I saw Jesus. Oh, y'all, y'all missed it. As soon as I saw my uncle, Coming down the way, I went crazy. I bet you won't hit me. Ow! Oh, that's what Jesus do for you. It's when you was afraid of the devil. When Jesus come in, you say, I got, somebody say, I got help now. It's nothing like a fight, an unfair fight, when you got help. See, see, most of you don't understand. I don't know where I'm going here. I'm going to get to my lesson. But most of you don't understand that the, fire, the fight is unfair because you got help. He don't have no help. Let me tell you something else, too. I was talking to somebody, and I thought about this. The devil is not omnipresent. He's a creation. We are God's creation. We can't be at five different places at one time. Y'all about to get it. So if the devil's at your house, he there by himself. But if you go in the fire, you got some help in there with you. I don't know who I'm talking to, but you need to know in your spirit that you're not by yourself. Even when it seems like you're alone, God said you're not alone. He'll fight the battle for you. The devil, matter of fact, could I say it this way? The devil is afraid of you. That's why he don't like you. The only reason the devil is not afraid of you if he know you're afraid of him. And so when he go around like a roaring lion, he's going around as, not a roaring lion, as a roaring lion. That means he demonstrate like he got something. I have seen some of the most talking and people talk plenty of trash, but when it come down to shooting them blows. Good God Almighty. I don't know who I'm preaching to. Have you ever seen somebody talk a bunch of trash, but when they come down to shooting them blows, they ain't going to do nothing. 
And that's what the devil is doing. The devil is selling you wolf tickets. The devil is telling you, you know, he, he, he intimidates you with his voice. He intimidates you with the thing. But God told me to tell you, don't let the devil intimidate you. You got to get the devil out your house. Where was I? <laughs> I'm gonna give y'all a scripture. And Nehemiah, I'm gonna give you one verse since I already, I'm gonna give you one verse, one verse. Nehemiah, the fourth chapter, the sixth verse. I'm, that's it. Nehemiah, four and six. We're not gonna even go any farther. So we built the walls. So we built the walls. And the what? The, and what? Entire what? Wall was what? Join it together up to the what? Half its height for the people. Now this is all I just want to, I'm through preaching. I'm almost finished. So we built the walls. We built them. We joined them together. But in order for us to do it, the people had a mind to work. Based on those people that came to the altar, and I want to give you this word too. This is a word for you. Be a loner. Somebody shout, be a loner. Mm -hmm. Nehemiah is a cupbearer that's been exiled. He's now serving as governor in the Persian Judea area. And he's serving under the king. Kind of like you got president and you got governors. So he's over the region, over Judea. But Nehemiah get a word. That Jerusalem, the walls and the gates have been torn down. The city is not the same from when they left it. It's a hard thing to, if I left New Bertha, for well, 10 years and come back and the grass got weeds and the carpet is all ruined. Nobody cares. Nobody have a vision to build. But God speaks to Nehemiah. Nehemiah fasts for four months and he prays. And he began to seek God, how can I rebuild the walls? But the story of Nehemiah reminds us how God worked through people and how God uses individuals to bring a city and a region back together. Nehemiah was a man and he began to communicate with God and he began to tell God and remind God of his covenant that he made with his people. How many of us in here, when we're talking about building on a good foundation, how many of us remind God 
the promise that he made to you and he made to your family. He said your seed will be blessed. Well, God, you told me that. Nehemiah began to talk to God and he said, Lord, I need you to grant me favor with the king. I need you to show me what's really going on. When Nehemiah began to consult God, God showed him how the sin was still causing Jerusalem trouble. He faced the problem head on, making plans to correct the problem immediately. The problem with us as people of God, we recognize there are walls in our life that have been shambled and broken, but we don't want to deal with the problem. We don't want to face the reality because some of us don't understand that as soon as you come to yourself and have a reality check and say, self, this is my issue, this is who I am, then you can come up with a plan and God can help you. We want God to help us in every situation, but we don't want to admit head on the things that we're dealing with. Nehemiah faced his reality. Nehemiah, not only that, he encouraged. After he came to himself, he began to encourage others that, ar that was around him to make them move towards the move of God and the vision of God. Nehemiah was one of the great leaders of Israel. He was the first powerful story showing how ancient Jerusalem walls, after being exiled, how God rebuilt the walls. Not only did God rebuild the walls, he rebuilt the people. The worst thing can ever happen to a Christian is that you think you can do it by yourself. Nehemiah, in his prayer, he realized that nothing can happen without the king. Nothing could happen without the other governors of the region. Nothing could happen without the smiths, the, 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 uh, 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 the, the smith that was in the family. These are families that was in the, uh, Jerusalem. Nothing could happen to, to the wine presser. Nothing could happen because Nehemiah began to go out throughout the city and found all types of people to build the wall. You would never reach your destiny by yourself. Everything Nehemiah began to do, he began to build off others' gifts. But the problem was, Nehemiah was dealing with people that had been exiled. That means someone that's been barred from their native country. They had to leave a place by force. And I thought about it when all the people had to leave, the Israelites had to leave, and they were in exile, they was in slavery. Here it is. Spiritually, we all have been exiled from our original place. We all have, the, uh, 1 Peter 2 and 25 says it this way, we all were like sheep gone astray. But now return unto the shepherd and the what? The bishop of our souls. When you return, this is a th some of you just re received it, when you return back from the place, all of us started in the church. Most of us started in the church. And we went exile. Look at your neighbor and say, I went exile too. All right, y'all, y'all, no, all right. Don't act like you've been saved your whole life. Go ahead and look at somebody and say, I was exiled too. Mm -hmm. to the same sanctified Holy Ghost fire baptized speaking in tongue dancing people you was exiled too because we all were like sheep going astray but Nehemiah Nehemiah he, he began to say I need to rebuild the walls Nehemiah knew he was facing a great opposition the odds were against Nehemiah and the shame. I want you to know when you become a Christian and when you become one that says, I'm giving my life over to God, the odds are against you. Because the Bible said the righteous were scarcely make it. In other words, you are the few that will find this road. Many, the road 
of destruction is broad, but that narrow gate, the narrow road, only a few people like you find that road. The odds was against Nehemiah. But you have to fight. You have to pray and you have to see God against all odds. Because it's not going to be easy. If you thought being saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost is going to be easy, that's not the case. The case is you need to know that you can't do it. You cannot build by yourself. Say it with me. I can't build by myself. Nehemiah recognized that I want to point this out, and I'm going to close. Two basic success things that we need to note with Nehemiah. Nehemiah's success was based on the people that was around him. If you hang out with dogs, you're going to get fleas. If you play with fire, you may not believe this. You might get burnt. And the hardest part is for a parent to tell a child, don't hang out with those people. They're all selling drugs. But mama, I don't sell drugs. Don't hang out with them people. I know they, they don't mean you no good. Mama, I, don't hang out with no people. See, we don't understand. Success is based on the people that are around you. And what made this wall and this venture successful is because of one, the people had a mind. You need to be around people with a mind. I'm not talking about a Facebook mind, and I'm not talking about drama mind. I'm not talking about uh, uh, all this kind of stuff. You need to be around people with a mind. People that are thinking about things that are positive, things that are lovely, things that have a good report. People that are saying, think on these things. We need to be around people with a mind that focus on God. How many spend their time around people that don't have a mind? Why don't you look at the person next to you and say, do you got a mind? Now, if they don't have a mind, you may need to move. You need Go ahead and look at them. Say, now, look at them hard. Do you got a mind? Well, if you got a mind, tell them, mind your business. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah, you, you missed it. Come on, tell, tell, look at them say, mind your business. If you got a mind, mind your own business. I don't need a mind around me that's dramafied. Somebody always in the sum, always in the sum, always gossiping. Hey, have you heard? Have you? I, I just can't be. I, it's hard for me to be around people. I'm already dealing with Sister Polk with her Amazon demon, and I got all this going. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 that slipped out. That slipped out. I got too much going on at my own house. <laughs> every, every day is a Amazon. I stop picking them up. All right, that's another story. <laughs> Some of you brothers, your wife got an Amazon demon too? Okay, yeah. Oh, praise God, half of the place. Hey, maybe somebody online. Yeah, yeah, I mean every day, every day, every day. And Amazon will send you something for $6. One, you need to be around somebody with a mind. The next, you need to be around somebody that's working. God don't call nobody that's not working. Not one person that you see in the Bible that's been called by God that's not working. Working is essential to the believer. You can't tell me you saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost, and you stay home. Paul said, guess what? I worked and built tents. You know why? Because I didn't want to build a stumbling block to the gospel. That's why he did it. Jesus worked. Jesus went door to door, house to house, city to city. He didn't just sit around and wait on folks to just give, bring him something. They had a mind to work. You cannot build your credit. You can't build a house. You can't build nothing, a relationship, unless you got a mind to work. 
And the thing about working, and I'm finished, you're going to have to build on your past. Ooh, y'all need to write that down. Nehemiah had to build on something that had already been started. You cannot try. Thank you. You cannot try to go on your own and start some other ministry when Jesus already made the foundation. We have to build on the foundation that's already been given to us. And this is why I tell people, and maybe somebody watching online, I'm not saying I'm not in the revelation, I'm not in interpretation, I'm not in the, the, the dreams, I'm, not, I'm, I'm all for everything. But before the dream, before the interpretation, before the revelation, you got to live right. It's no reason for me to have all this revelation and I'm living in sin. The goal that God is trying to build is build believers that are sin free. We should not be walking around where everybody said, I love the Lord, but I'm still practicing sin. And you can't build on that foundation. It'll weaken. It'll crumble. And so many young people, that's right, Sean, so many young people grow up in church. And as soon as they get 18, they run and they bend the wall. Why? Because they never really built on a strong foundation. We just raised our kids to come to church, come to a building, clap their hands, and they live it like devils. Oh, y'all ain't got to say amen. Y'all can get up out of here right now because it ain't going to get no better. We got to get to a place, even as adults, we got to say to ourselves, we got to live a sin-free lifestyle. Because if we're going to build and we expect other people to build with us, we got to have a mind to work for God. That's why the churches are not full. The churches are not full because people don't want to come to church. They just don't want to be around a bunch of hypocrites. If we begin to live right and build right, it may not come up fast. I'm not worried about how fast the church grows, but when we get there, it's going to be solid. Some of these kids, they know the story with the pigs, right? Right? It was three of them. Was it four? It was three. The, the adults knew it more than y'all, the kids did. Yeah, yeah. But one of the pigs, he decided he's going to build his out of what? Out of straw. You remember that story? Y'all remember that story? And the other pig that took his time and built it on the rock. Am I breaking it down to you? They, he built it on a rock, but the one that built it out of straw had his house up fast. And the one that was building a rock he didn't have two or three courses, but the other guy had already started his church. They was getting down. <laughs> then another one come along, and he built his out of what? What boy? <laughs> he built it out of stick. And not only that, the one that built it out of straw and stick, they got together. <laughs> Am I talking right? And when they got together, they went down to, to the old preacher, old sanctified preacher, <laughs> sanctified pig. He, he ain't got much. And guess what they did? What did they do, Sean? What they did with the pig that was building it slow? What they did? They made fun. 
that he laughed at him. Anybody know what I'm talking about? That's right. They laughing at you because it looked like you getting this smoke. But how many know the wolf coming? Oh, how many know the devil coming? And if you ain't got your house in order, tell your neighbor he'll blow you down. Oh, I wish I had some help. I, I tell you, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, he'll huff and puff. And I ain't talking about huffing and puffing on no new points either. I ain't talking about, oh, y'all. He told, oh, the devil will blow your house down. But wait a minute. Can I preach it the way I see it? But that sanctified brick laying preacher that looked like while they was having church, he was just laying brick. And when, when they got in trouble, y'all, y'all, y'all ready? They end up, y'all, I don't know who I'm preaching to. They end up the same people they was laughing at. They say, Preacher, uh, Preacher Pig, can I just use it? That's my interpretation. Preacher Pig, could you let me in? He let me say, The wolf has this. The wolf has this. And we don't lost our church. We don't lost our members. Everything. Else. I said, Man, come on, somebody. New birth say, Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Oh, y'all missing. New birth, you need to be shout because God is about to let some stuff happen. And God is going to bring an overflow because people are going to be looking for shelter. People are going to be looking for healing. People are going to be looking for the real thing. Oh, I don't know who I'm preaching to, but you need to get ready because God is about to do something at New Birth. So, 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 y'all sit down, give me one second, I'm about to get out of here. So the wolf don't ran everybody else out their church. But the church that looked like it wasn't worth nothing, they came and they say, let us in. And because of the love and because it was built on a solid rock, watch this, y'all. Y'all watch the revelation. We had room. Though millions have come, we still have room for one more. Look at your neighbor and say, one more coming, one more coming. And when they came in, they was telling the preacher pig about their experience. And lo and behold, the same wolf that knocked their house down destroyed their ministry messed around and came to Job's house. I wish I had some Bible believer folk in here. I say the devil showed up to Job's house. But they, the devil didn't realize his house was built on a solid rock. And as a matter of fact, the devil had to go to God and say, God, you know what? I can't even touch that because you don't. You know, I don't know. I might as well tell your neighbor I'm building on it. I'm going to build, I'm going to build, I'm going to build on what God said. I may be hurt, but I'm going to build on it. I may be weak, but I'm going to build on it. I may be stubborn, I'm going to build on it. I may be hard-headed, but God knows I'm going to keep on. Somebody shout, build on it. No matter how difficult it may get. When that wolf came, he was messing with the wrong one. He was blowing. Yeah, some of y'all don't realize. Do you, do you not know the devil been blowing? He been blowing on your ministry, been blowing on your house, been blowing on your, oh, he don't blow it on somebody's car here. Somebody's car about to try to break down. But the devil's a lie. I got triple A. <laughs> oh, I
The devil start blowing everywhere. The devil come, he'll blow on your kids, he'll blow on your husband, he'll blow on your wife, he'll blow on your circumstance. But I don't care. I, 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 I don't know who I'm talking to. Maybe somebody online. But I came to let you know the devil about to run out of breath. Because he can blow, oh, he can blow, he can huff, he can, oh, y'all missing it. I wish I had some, somebody should have got up and shouted. Because the devil been blowing on my ministry, the devil been blowing on my house, the devil been blowing on my marriage. But the devil can't knock it down because this marriage, this house is built on a good town. Somebody shout, build on it, build on it, build on it. That don't mean the gates of hell won't come up against it, but it won't prevail. Build on it. Oh! Jesus said, stand up all over this room. He said, Upon upon this rock, I build a church. And the gates of hell, it's going to come. But it won't knock it down. Next time y'all walk in the foyer, next time you walk in the foyer, next time you walk in the foyer, look over. And the picture, when we built this, this, when we built this platform, this foundation, the Lord told me to get on the old church. He told me to write on the, on the, I think it's called Bisqueen, the, the plastic that they put the, and I wrote the scripture somewhere in between here. And every 10 feet is olive oil. Next time you go and you look at that picture, you'll see olive oil. You'll see the little, little, little uh, we wrap them in uh, 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 like paper or napkins. And we put them every 10 feet around the perimeter of this, of this building. And we wrote the scripture, Matthew, I think it's Matthew 16 and 18. And we wrote the scripture on the Bisqueen. And I don't know about y'all, but we standing on the word. All right, I'm going to say it again. Right where you are, we're standing on the word. And the word was the rock of God. I don't know about you, but I'm glad I'm standing on a firm foundation. All over this room, hold your hands up. The devil been blowing. The devil been blowing. And it may have taken you years to build it. And I can see us right now, new birth, I can see right now in the spirit that God is rebuilding some things even as people come back from the pandemic. He's still building. But Nehemiah, he started in prayer. He started fasting. But he partnered with the people of God. He partnered with the people of the region. You can't do it by yourself. I want you to know that if, you, if I could just give you one block to help you put to your next course, and if you can give me one block, we working together. The Bible said, Nehemiah, as they built the walls, they had the sword in one hand, and they begin to work in the, in the other hand. And while you're working, sometimes you got to have your sword with you, which is the word of God. That's going to keep you. That's going to keep you from falling backwards. I don't care who you are in this room. You will fall. You will stumble. You will have some ups and some downs. But praise be to God, when you fall forward, you have somebody to help pick you back up. So, Father God, now I spoke a word to someone's spirit. Someone here in this room, huh, someone needed this word to build their spirit back up to build their faith back up, 
to encourage somebody to keep building. Don't be weary in well-doing. Don't be weary in the work. Surround yourself with good people. Surround yourself with people that got a mind that want to work. I pray that God that they have great success. I pray that God that you move on them, move on their families and all that they endeavor to do. We forever give you praise. Everyone hold their hands up real quickly before we leave here. Mm, yeah. You have won. Come on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you believe it? Do you receive it? Hallelujah. Everybody open up your mouth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ah.